In this video, we'll talk about several things related to rotating parts, including how to rotate nested parts, restricting part rotation, and then how to move parts around on the nest using bumping. Each part has a property called initial rotation. This just lets you change the natural orientation of the part. So let's say I have this rectangle selected here in the part list and I change the initial rotation to 90. That will rotate that part at 90 degrees from how it was drawn in CAD. And now when I manually nest that one, it'll be nested at the 90 degree rotation initially. Okay, we'll get rid of that and then set it back to zero. There's another property called grain restraint. This is used for parts with a rotation restriction. So it may be that the part needs to run parallel to the grain of the material. So parallel to the X or Y axes of the sheet. Let's say that the length of this rectangle here needs to be parallel to the Y axis of the plate. So with grain restraint for this part set to zero, I can add this and Pronus will allow any rotation at all. So this is not what I want. All right, let's get rid of it. And this time we'll set the grain restraint to 180. This will keep the length of that part parallel to the Y axis of the plate. So I'll bring this over. And now the only allowable orientations for this part on the nest will be zero degrees or 180 degrees. It will not rotate to any other angle during automatic nesting. So during manual nesting, you can rotate it to a different angle, but when you try to place the part, Pronus will give you an error. This lets you know that the part orientation violates that grain restraint angle. All right, so this is something I'd need to correct. Another way that grain restraint is sometimes used is for rectangular parts where you want the edges of the part to always be squared to the edges of the plate. So you always want them to be parallel to the X or Y axes on your table. Um, in this case, you could set the grain restraint to 90. And now Pronus will allow orientations of 0, 90, 180, and 270. And any other angle wouldn't be allowable. Okay, that covers grain restraint. Let's set this back to 0 for now for that part. So you'll notice as the part is selected on the nest, several things happen. First, in the part list, there's a small number in brackets that appears. And that's the number of copies of that part that are currently selected. So that's what that indicates. Also, there's a parts tab that appears up in the ribbon. And this contains controls for the selection only. So you can select one or more parts at a time. And the items on that parts tab will apply only to the selected items. So I can duplicate the part, mirror the part, and then rotate it. Let's take a quick look at rotating a selected part. So the rotation commands are up in the ribbon. They're also here for this part at the corners of the selection. So the circles at the corner are different handles for rotating the part. So the upper right is a free rotate control. You can just click and drag to rotate the part there. Upper left will rotate counterclockwise by a fixed amount. So this is the increment angle shown in the ribbon. Right now I have this set to 10 degrees. But if I click this, it will rotate it by 10 degrees. So these controls in the ribbon do the same thing. You can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise by that interval. Okay, the lower left is for rotating to 90 degrees. So this is 90 degrees from the initial rotation of the part. And then there's another option on the lower right called rotate long side. That would be more visible with a part such as this where you want to rotate the long side of the part to the next 90 degrees. So something like that. So as you continue nesting parts, you'll have different parts at different angles. If you ever need to know the rotation angle of a specific nested part, just right click the part, select properties, and then the rotation angle will be shown in that dialog. In the previous video, we looked at Smart Drag, 
which controls how parts bump up against plate edges or other nested parts as they're being dragged. So like this. There are some other ways of bumping parts in ProNest. All selected parts have four boxes that appear at the edges. These are the bump handles. You can just click a bump handle in order to bump the part in that direction. You can also use the keys on your keyboard to do this. So up, down, left, and right. Notice that as you do this, it will bump the part to the nearest plate edge or neighboring part using the separation values from your process parameters settings for spacing. So let's zoom in a little bit on this part here. There's a spacing value that's used here. If you want to see that on the view tab, select separations. And I have a plate separation value of 0.5 or 1 half inch right now. So this is coming from settings and this is what's being used. Um, if I were to bump this to the nearest part, this has a part separation value of 1 quarter inch or 0.25. So again, that's coming from settings and you can adjust that value nest by nest if you need to in these boxes. Okay, we also have a zero separation bump. So if you want to bump and ignore those separation values, hold a control key and then click the bump handle or just use your keyboard. And then it will bump the part and use a separation value of zero. So there's no space left in between. This is primarily used for applications like common line cutting. Uh, next is a nudge. So you can just bump the part a short distance by holding the shift key and then clicking and the part will be moved a small distance in that direction. And that distance can be configured in your nesting settings. That's called the nudge distance. Okay, another note here about moving and rotating parts. As you move parts around on the parts tab, any move can be undone by just clicking undo. And then you can also redo a move as well. So that's for moving and rotating parts.